in an unlikely partnership, Koei Tecmo's Omega Force, known for their various Musou titles, has teamed up with EA for a new hunting game, Wild Hearts. Similar to their Tokiden games in the past, Wild Hearts takes notes from the Monster Hunter series, and it's all about battling ferocious beasts and crafting new gear with the spoils from your kills. While it's not as strong as its inspiration, Wild Hearts is a great entry with some creative features that help distinguish it. Like all hunting style games, the main draw here is the various monsters called kimono. Described as nature-infused beasts, these deadly opponents can easily tear you apart if you're not careful, and watching them harness elemental powers is a sight to behold. There's a good number of them to take on, like Lava Back, a giant ape with a volcanic body that hurls molten rock, and King Tusk, a massive boar covered in roots and other plant life. Additionally, there are variations of many kimono that mix up familiar encounters, like Ice Tusk, which unleashes deadly ice attacks. Some are more challenging than others, but battling them is a lot of fun, and learning how to take each one down is satisfying. One of the most distinct aspects of Wild Hearts is the Karakuri, which are structures you can build on the fly. They're a key component to the game, used to aid you in a variety of ways in and outside of combat. The Karakuri that get the most use are basic things like boxes, springs, and gliders, which can be quickly built via hotkeys. While they have value on their own, like stacking boxes to perform a special jump attack or using a spring to dodge, combining them results in more powerful structures like a giant hammer to pummel kimono or a giant wall that can be used to block devastating attacks. A specific skill tree for your Karakuri allows you to unlock upgrades as well as brand new items to aid you on hunts. As you progress, Karakuri gets slightly more complex, but all of them are simple enough to be built within a few seconds, which is important when you're in the middle of a fight. To build anything, you need thread, which can be collected from rocks and trees or regained over time with some upgrades. Thankfully, collecting thread never takes very long, letting you get right back into the action. Additionally, you can only have four basic Karakuri equipped at a time, so you won't be able to build everything anytime you want, but you can easily swap between them by visiting a forge. There are also Dragon Karakuri, which are more focused on helping you outside of battle. There are plenty of useful things to build, like tents that allow you to fast travel, forges where you can craft gear, and hunting towers that help you find kimono in the wild. A few are dedicated to traversal, including flying vines that you can zip across, and giant fans that lift you high into the air. While you don't need thread to build these structures, you do need dragon pit energy, which you get by unlocking dragon pits and upgrading them in each area. All in all, the Karakuri are a great addition that feel completely unique to Wild Hearts. Quickly building a structure to save you from death at the last moment feels incredibly satisfying, and sprinkling Dragon Karakuri through each zone is fun and adds a nice sense of progression. In terms of weapons, there are eight types to choose from, each with its own playstyle. The starting weapon, the Karakuri Katana, starts off as a basic sword, but once you build its meter, it transforms into a bladed whip surrounded by lightning. The Nodachi, on the other hand, is a heavy greatsword that revolves around charging up attacks to land devastating blows. Meanwhile, the bladed Wagasa works like an umbrella and allows you to parry blows, and it excels while attacking in the air. The overall weapon count may seem small, but they're all fun to use and experiment with. There was a bridge there, you see? Linking the Harugasumi way here to the other side. That's where Minato is. In between hunts, you can spend time in the human settlement of Minato, which acts as a hub. Here you can craft gear, buy food and supplies, and contribute gold to help expand the village. There are plenty of citizens to speak with, some offering side quests and story bits to get you invested, which is appreciated even if they aren't the most engaging conversations. Still, it's nice to have a comfy home base to return to once in a while. <coughs> to no surprise, crafting plays a large role in Wild Hearts. The basics work as you'd expect as you harvest resources from the world and collect kimono parts from hunts to craft new weapons and armor. Beyond this, though, you upgrade weapons via their own trees and select passive skills to carry on to new weapons. Also, some armor pieces have perks that are only activated when you reach certain human or kimono affinity levels. If you want a kimono or human-focused piece of gear, though, you first need to craft the basic version. Then you'll be able to choose any type after. It can be annoying to make the base version first, but it's not a huge deal. The pulse of the heavens that weaves through all things is stagnating. With each new dawn, it stagnates more. 
While hunting with others is the main draw, if you go solo, you still have some help from your robot friend, Tsukumo. Tsukumo acts like a palico from Monster Hunter, assisting you in encounters with some low damage attacks, and it taunts Kimono once in a while. Tsukumo can be upgraded by gathering old cogs from other Tsukumo scattered throughout each region, granting it perks such as increased damage, more defense, or tools to assist you like a healing spray or faster thread recharge time. It's not the most helpful thing in combat, but it does come in clutch every now and then. From a performance standpoint, Wild Hearts feels all over the place. In single player, things are generally smooth with some frame drops, but in multiplayer, the frame rate never feels steady, constantly fluctuating even in performance mode. Hopefully future patches will smooth things out, but for now, it's very noticeable. On a positive note, we've barely encountered any disconnects, and the game features crossplay, making it even easier to team up with fellow hunters, which is a very welcome feature. Wild Hearts is fairly long, but even after the credits roll, there's still more to do like fighting even harder versions of Kimono. Additionally, there will be free DLC later on, so there's plenty of content to sink your teeth into. In an era when Monster Hunter dominates the space, it's nice to have a newcomer step up to the plate and offer some competition, and Wild Hearts is a good start. It has a solid core with fun monsters to fight, and the Karakuri system is genuinely great, setting it apart from its peers. While performance woes can hinder it, Wild Hearts is still a good time overall, and hopefully the start of a bright new future for the IP. You have to slay the thing before that happens. All of you. Final score, 7.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching our review. We're Easy Allies. We've been writing about games for decades, and we also do podcasts, streams, shows, and more, all funded by regular viewers just like you. Head to patreon.com slash easyallies to pitch in and get rewards. And be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay connected on YouTube. See you soon.